All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Lakeside Christian Conference Center, where the uh, 2018 Camp Constitution Family Camp will be held, and God willing, to be held there, you know, year after year. My name is Hal Shirtliff, and I am the camp director. And again, I want to thank you for coming out in this uh, beautiful early spring morning, <laughs> yeah. with snow on the ground and temperatures hovering around the freezing mark. Uh, here's a picture of last year's camp and beautiful Toa Nippi Retreat Center, and. Uh, this, will, this will be our 10th annual camp, and uh, I'm so glad that we have some of our instructors here, and uh, I thank all of you, uh, Roberta and uh, Kathy were the ones that created the, the wonderful, our uh, wonderful Patriot Camp, or Junior Camp. So next year's, uh, this year's camp will run from August 5th to the 11th, and I have all kinds of promotional materials, which I hope you take home with you. And uh, they have a group here, so I was I was kind of call it an open house, so you can kind of get a look at some of the facilities. But I didn't want to infringe on their privacy. Uh, so you know, you'll see some just with all the snow around. It's not as easy to walk around, but it's a lovely facility, and that was thanks to uh, Diane Clements, who's uh, ladies group who uses we'll camp. Be here next and, week. and so uh, I checked it out last April, and I said this will work. And um, I love the green monster, the, the wiffle ball field, oh. the beautiful lake. You're in Pittsfield, but you're in the woods, you know, you think, gee, it's a city, and all of a sudden, you're in the country with a mile, one mile off the road. So, uh, as we, we just sampled the food, so I think we can all say the food's uh, pretty good. And uh, when the snow melts, uh, the leaves come back on the trees, it's very nice and green. And the, the arrangements, and they even have wireless here, right? So it's not really wilderness, so we're very pleased to be here. Uh, every year we have uh, featured instructors. Now, we have, you know, about four or five instructors here. Earl Wallace, who's been a, a, a regular, who's a big addition to the camp. He's been since 2010. William Levy, Dr. Kishore, and who am I missing? Anybody else? Yeah, okay. Uh, but this year, uh, we having a, um, some of you may know him. He's a British Lord, Lord Christopher Lord Monkton. Monkton. And he's going to be here. In fact, he's also going to be doing some engagements because I was told to keep him busy. And then he said, keep, you know, he said, keep me busy. We have him speaking in Saratoga, I think that Tuesday of camp, and then uh, Friday morning in Lexington, Massachusetts, and Thursday night in Mar Marlboro, Massachusetts, uh, hosted by a Tea Party group. Professor Willie Soon, who made his presence possible, by the way, because Willie said, Where's, why don't you invite Lord, Christ Lord Christopher? He says, well, there's a little honorarium going. He said, if he comes, he won't charge anything. Because you know? Willie's the one that got him here to begin with, got him here to the United States to begin with. Professor Willie Soon, some of you might have heard him speak in Albany. He's going to return with his family. He called me up, uh, it was uh, like a week after camp, last year's camp. He says, can I bring my mother-in-law too? We're a close family. I said, sure, we'll make room for mom-in-law. Why not? Uh, Mrs. Chris Ann Hall, who has been to camp in the past, um, I think four years in a row. Last year she was scheduled to come, but had some kind of last minute issue. And Dr. Duke Pesta. Uh, and all these people, I would say, are tops in their field, experts in the field. So we're very excited about the lineup. And um, <clears throat> just a little history of our camp program. Our first camp was held in 2009 uh, in, in Ringe, New Hampshire. And I think we might have had about 60, 65 people. And uh, we've grown every year since then. And we have campers as far away as Michigan, Pennsylvania, wow. Florida, New England, um, even New York, uh, New Jersey. And it's a family camp, and we say this, uh, some people have an idea of what a camp is, and a lady got a hold of me and she said, I think my daughter's too old for camp, she's 15. I said, well, that's the ideal you know, age. And maybe her experience was camp is for little children, you know. So it's all ages. Uh, we have unaccompanied minors as well. Uh, and uh, we have a nine-year-old. I got a call from somebody. My, my daughter's nine years old. I said, will you be coming? No, I said, she's a little young. Oh, she said she wanted to go to a Republican camp, but, you know, I says, well, we're not a Republican camp. I think we're a whole lot better than that. So I said, she's going to be homesick. Oh, no, she won't. She wants to go to camp. She oh, goes wow. to camp. I says, well, okay. But if she comes home, you're driving the three and four hours to get her, you know. I said, don't worry about that. Um, uh, last year, we had about 120 people participating. And our Patriot Camp is for five and levy rollers. I think they have more fun than anybody else. You know, I used to teach Sunday school. And I used to tell the parents when they drop them off, I'd say, what we do in the, is, what you do upstairs during the service is just distracting the adults with the real important <laughs> stuff down here, right? Because that's the next generation we got to be worrying about, right? So, okay. Um, our motto, we can, we can sum up our agenda by our motto. 
honoring the past, teaching the present, preparing the future. And it isn't just young people that we're influencing. We're influencing adults because a lot of adults are sometimes new to some of these issues, like learning about the Constitution. So is this um, an overnight camp? It's an overnight oh, camp, okay. yes. Uh, now, we, we'll, we'll have some day campers that sure. live near, in the area. We can make those arrangements. We mm -hmm. try to be as flexible. We do not have any trailer or tenting uh, places here at this camp, but there are a lot of t uh, campers in the area. We can make arrangements. You know, you can come here during the day. We'll make some arrangements. Um, <clears throat> We run a week-long family camp, and we actually just started a weekend camp uh, in, in Maine, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, we have information tables at various venues, homeschool shows, county fairs, gun shows. And by the way, you think gun owners know a lot about the Constitution? The first question in our little quiz, you know, which amendment protects the right to bear arms? They get that one right, but then it goes downhill after that. Really, it's really... Uh, and that's why we have to be at these venues, so we can help teach people about the Constitution. Um, we have a publishing arm, and some of our books are here. Uh, let's see, uh, we have a, a Scribd.com page. It's like a place to upload, it's like a YouTube for documents. Um, we have articles, books, reprints. Some of the articles are written by our instructors and some of their books. We have a YouTube channel, Vimeo, and there's a few others that we use, not as much though. Our YouTube channel, we're averaging uh, about 1,500 views a day. That's up over 500 from, uh, actually 1,600, up over uh, 1,000 by the end of last year. And we monetize some of them, so actually we don't make a whole lot of money, but it helps. So please, if you can, share, get a, a, be, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share some of the videos. A lot of the videos of our, and this is our very competent and capable uh, videographer here, does a great job. Uh, we upload many of our classes, so people want to know, what, what do you teach at Camp Constitution? Visit our YouTube channel. Okay. What, do you, uh, what do you do for fun? At, well, teaching is fun. Learning is fun, isn't it? But some of our recreational things, a tug of war, and what have you. Um, we offer a, a life-changing or life-affirming experience, and this is what parents tell us. One year, it was a couple of years ago, a family from our church, um, their children came, and the, the wife said to my wife, wow, what did you, what do you guys do there? Uh-oh, I go, we get a problem. No, he's so different now. You know, he's like so much better. I said, well, that's what we, we like to do, you see. We offer also lifetime friendships, you know. That's something, uh, how, do you, how do you measure that, you know, networking and friendships. Um, we help make current constitutional activists more effective and help to create the next generation of liberty and freedom activists. <laughs> and I tell this, uh, our camp is a highlight of our family's year. All my, my hope, my wife, my, my children were all campers and all but Emily are now counselors. And they look forward to it every year. Uh, I'll just go over some of the instructors over the years. Uh, Mrs. Chris Ann Hall, uh, the late Sam Blumenfeld, oh, Art Horn, who's a weatherman from Hartford, Connecticut, Dr. Mildred Jefferson, Dr. Michael Kaufman, Tom Dewey's. Some guy named John McManus. Anybody know? I forget. <laughs> and he's coming by. He's coming by this year too. By the way, um, we had elected officials uh, over the years. Uh, Garrett Lear, the Patriot pastor. We had a great time. We had a flag raising event in downtown Boston about four or five years ago. The Gadsden flag. And this gentleman is six foot seven, and he's wearing the black robe regiment, the attire of the clergymen of the. 18th century. This isn't the stuff you buy in a costume shop. These are authentic, you know, yeah. reproductions. And he's got his firing musket with him. He's walking down John Boston. Oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> Nobody's messing with this guy. <laughs> uh, people say, is that, is that a real one? He said, I don't carry toys. You know? um, <coughs> Reverend Stevie Kraft, who's one of our staples, a very dynamic man. Uh, we had a lady with a Minuteman uh, project, Karen Whalen. She was at the Mexican border and she told her experiences. Fred Polnitz, and that was thanks to Earl, our Uncle Sam reenactor. Tom Moe is a local historian. Uh, Earl Wallace, author of The Three Dimensional Leader. Yep. And uh, Jim Perloff, author of Shadows of Power. We could make it, but we got his, to, his double here. And uh, Pastor Lively was here, and many others. Willie Soon, Larry Pratt, who are gun owners of America. And uh, this is uh, our beloved Earl, next to uh, Fred Polnitz a few years ago. Well, we actually visited the Uncle Sam house, the original, um, the real, true Uncle Sam, Sam Wilson. These are some pictures of some of our instructors, Reverend Steve. He was helping out at a homeschool show there a couple of years ago, and uh, Chris Ann Hall. How many know who Chris Ann Hall is? You familiar with Chris Ann Hall? Yeah, if you're not, I really recommend her uh, 
go to her website, chrisannhall.com .org. And Tom Deweese of the American Policy Center. And by the way, I had some, uh, I got an offer from Tom back in November. He said his, uh, his ex-wife had passed away, they were still very close, and he started thinking about his mortality. And he asked me if I would do presentations on behalf of American Policy Center. He said you'd get the honorarium, travel expenses, he said, and you can promote Camp Constitution all you want. I said, you got a deal, brother. <laughs> that was an easy one. And uh, so he's a great he's a great guy. We really like the work he's done. He's uh, one of the top experts on Agenda 21, probably in the world, since um, uh, Dr. Mike Kaufman passed away. He might have gone up a notch you know, on, that, yeah. on that expertise. <laughs> yeah, we missed our, uh, Dr. Kaufman. These are some of the classes we teach. And uh, I'm always open for suggestions, um, and I'm not a dictator, I'm not the camp dictator, I'm the camp director. So people will say, gee, we could use a class on this. So I said, great, you'll teach it. Right? Yeah. Someone suggested a class on the vaccine issue. Mm -hmm. I said, well, who do, I, who do we have in our, well, how about a guy who's a public health, uh, from Har has a degree from public health at Harvard? Mm -hmm. And he did, actually did a presentation for us, a very nice job. Yeah. So uh, we, have, we do classes on America's godly heritage and the faith of our founders. The U.S. and state constitutions. How many have read their state constitution? Yeah, st states have constitutions, you know. And some of those constitutions, when they, they are much more stronger, stronger written. In fact, in Massachusetts, you have the right to defend your property. That doesn't mean call 911 and hide under the table. That means you pick up your, your weapon and defend your property, see. Um, and Massachusetts constitution is the oldest one in the world. They've, it's been amended a whole lot, but you read the first part of it, it talks about the great, it is our duty and obligation to worship the great architect of the universe. Wow. They're not talking about Bechtel Corporation, by the way. <laughs> uh, then we have um, exposing Agenda 21 and, and the United Nations, which is an enemy of, of ours, and if anyone can say that, well, pa Pastor, um, Pastor Levy right there can affirm that as uh, someone from the Sudan. Uh, morality and freedom, you cannot have one without the other. It's impossible. Uh, we, we may not do it this year. The Midnight Rider, Paul Revere, uh, we actually will trace his footsteps when we go on our field trips. Mm. Economics, what is money? And you know, usually when you say economics, you start snoozing. But we talk about hard money, and then we'll bring a, a silver or gold coin and drop it. And it makes a sound, see? Hard money makes a sound when you drop it, right? So we <laughs> kind of have fun with that. Also, young people, they get their first pay stub. What's all this stuff, you know? I was supposed to get $10 an hour, and I'm only getting about five bucks. I'm like, you know, I says, well, don't you know about state tax and federal tax and this tax and that tax and thumb tax and heart attacks? <laughs> so then they realize what's going on. Then they start paying attention. Um, uh, creationism versus evolution. We take the creationism side, creationism side, by the way. Uh, we, conspiracy, you know, we don't believe in alien shapeshifters. Although a picture of Spignu Brzezinski, one may, one may have some doubts about that. But we, we, we actually define it and we explain the influence of these organizations that aren't in our best interest. The right to keep and bear arms, like we had Larry Pratt of Gun Owners of America there last, uh, last year. Leadership, having all this knowledge is great. But if you don't use it properly, what's the point? Now how, so we need to, and we need, do you think there's leadership meeting in the, uh, in the Christian and freedom community? Or do we have plenty of it? No. That's right. Uh, how to be a constitutional activist. Uh, then we have a class on constitutional state militias versus National Guard. That's sort of an, we do have an advanced class, by the way. And we may even have a class on the vaccines. I think we're going to do just adults, I think, this year. Uh, timeline of, uh, line of US history. I think that's so important, because you ask people, young people, did Abraham Lincoln know George Washington? <laughs> you know, and they don't, well, yeah. one was World War I fought. You know, what, what, when was, was the Civil War fought? When was that? And who did you fight? You know, they do those man on the street interviews, you know? And they'll say, oh, yeah, we were, we were allies with Germany during World War II. You know, they, you know they, people have a very poor concept of history. Uh, then we have a lot of fun, and in addition to learning, which is a lot of fun. Yes, we have chess tournaments, you know? So we don't have, we're not all gifted athletes. We do have our nerds. And you can be a nerd and an athlete, too, right? Right, Earl? Right, because Earl's probably that way, right? I don't see you doing any 360 slams, though, on the basketball court. So, But I love the, uh, the, the field here. They have a, uh, a makeshift uh, green monster, you know, uh, wiffle ball field here. Basketball, volleyball, softball, and wiffle ball. We don't have indoor rock climbing here, um, but they do have a confidence course. 
uh, here. And canoeing, hiking, fishing, swimming, ballroom dancing. They say, ballroom dancing? You know, what, what doesn't belong here, right? <laughs> ballroom dancing. Some of the campers asked if they could do that. Wow. Now, we have a very strict policy that you don't hold hands, males and females, unless you get a wedding ring. Okay? <laughs> you know, even then, we don't we discourage it. But um, we make the exception. And uh, they have a lot of fun doing it. You know, it's a really nice, wholesome. Uh, we have a camp newspaper that comes out at night after campfire. And in the camp newspaper will be the daily inspection, the results of the inspection. We do yeah. have uh, standards of cleanliness, but also we're looking for themes, you know, like patriotic and Christian themes. Although you can't stick stuff to the walls and, you know, we, we you know, can't nail anything to the wall. Uh, we have a campfire and, of course, Earl brings his guitar. and. We do not play Ozzy Osbourne's music at Campfire. I hope that will disappoint you. Um, he does with Jimi Hendrix. No, uh, well, we do play, what was the song, God, God Bless America? Yeah. Uh, that, that, what did he do? He did, he did get one. He did a song of a national anthem, right? Yeah, but we won't do a Jimi Hendrix. In fact, this is our camp songbook, so you have an idea of what, what, uh, what kind of songs we do. We do have campers that will bring their instruments. Um, and we have skits and other fun things at camp. Um, we've had staff with lots of experience. I've been involved with uh, these types of camps since 1990. Hmm. Our, our program director is a retired school teacher. We have someone coming up the ranks who a, uh, a, has a degree in teaching as a school teacher. Our head counselor has been involved in camps like this since 1976, and he still has a lot of uh, gas in the tank. Uh, we have counselors, and most of the counselors are parents. You know, uh, parents or grandparents, a uh, camp nurse, doctor, lifeguard. I think they have a lifeguard for us here at camp. So that's always the most difficult person to get for some reason. You know what it is? They don't pay them much. Yeah. You think economies of scale. As one year, we were desperate. We'd, we'd give you 500 bucks, you know, give you all the you know, free lodging and everything else, and they took it. But uh, And if without a lifeguard, you don't swim. Yeah. You know, you don't want to swim in, in the summertime. No. A recreational director. And all of this, all these people make it, make it work. Um, this is our daily schedule. 6.30 a.m. is optional polar bear swim. The ice does melt by August, I think, so it's not too polar bearish. And we have a, a, a optional run or swim or both. 7 o'clock wake up. We usually, one year we had a bugler, you know, if you played all the uh -huh. revelry, it was kind of neat. So anyone buglers, please come and uh, play revelry and taps. And, uh, the morning devotion and flag raising, where we uh, do a prayer, read a, a verse from the Bible, raise the flag breakfast at 8, and then we have three classes in the morning, all 50 minutes long, no longer, Mr. Wallace. Uh, you have to sometimes get the vaudeville look because he gets on fire. Uh, and we have plenty of time in between to stretch our legs. Um, you see all the, this place has all kinds of great recreational activities. And let's see, uh, lunch, and then in the afternoon we'll have organized recreation for about an hour, hour and a half. And then uh, tug of war, steal the bacon. That's a fun game. All you need, all you need is like a wiffle ball bat, right? Or something like that, and it's a great game. Basketball, chess tournaments, ping. I don't know if they have ping pong here. I think you have ping pong here. Yeah, you have ping pong. Yeah. And then from, from two to five, they have sort of free time, uh, and there's all kinds of great. So they'll be reading the Bible, of course, and they'll be uh, doing things like that. Now, most young people on their free time and on summertime, what they do, right? Yeah. Then dinner at 5:30. We have two more classes right, between flag lowering, and. Um, <clears throat> Campfire is at 9 o'clock, and we say bring your flashlight and mosquito repellent. Then at 10 o'clock, late night snack, distribute the camp newspaper. And this is somehow theoretical, but lights out at 11. <laughs> we, we, uh, if, we, if we see the lights are out, that doesn't mean they're all snoozing and sleeping, but we do our best. <laughs> the last full day, it's uh, we don't relax the rules, but we let them stay up a little bit later. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to have an optional field trip to Mount Greylock. Now, Mount Greylock, you can actually drive to the top, where Mount Monadnock, you could not do that. And Mount Monadnock was very challenging to do it in the afternoon, physically challenging. I get up there at the top, and I'm on the way up, and I'm saying, what was I thinking scheduling? Now, why do I do this to myself every year? But then you get up there and you say, yeah, it's really worth it, you know. And it's nice that I can get home, get back to camp, wake up, and I'm not all stiff. And some of the young campers, oh, I'm aching. I said, man, I'm, I'm 59 years old. You, sh you shouldn't have any problems, right? Uh, Wednesday, we're going to have an all-day field trip, Battle of Bennington. And we're going to actually go up to Saratoga. And your stepfather, I mean stepfather, your um, father-in-law is going to do the tour, right? He volunteered. Your father-in-law. Oh, was it Yeah, he yeah. said he's going to do the, he's going to volunteer his time there, yeah. 
And <clears throat> our last full day, Friday, we're going to do a community outreach. We don't take the whole camp, but we take about 20 or so campers and some staff, and we distribute these subversive things called U.S. Constitutions. <laughs> so we'll go into the uh, businesses with uh, little copies of the Constitution, and the purpose of this is to let these young people know that they have a lot of potential if they just used it. When was the last time a young person handed you a copy of the Constitution or a Bible track when they came to your door? What, if they did come to your door, what were they doing? Yeah. They had a clipboard and they said, oh, can you sign this for Bernie Sanders? Yeah. Or you can sign this so we can have Planned Parenthood fund our, you know, our town or, you know, how about Greenpeace? And they're getting paid per signature, oh, yeah. see? So the young people, we have to have our young people out there and being active. And then, uh, let's see, uh, our closing ceremonies, we have awards, we have Super Camper for the male and female. And, and it was, we vote on it uh, Saturday in the morning, and we try to. We, last, last year we didn't quite get it right, we had to take another vote. And, um, and then we have uh, the Patriot Camp Awards too for the young people. Um, so it's, uh, it, the week goes by very fast, you know. I tell you, it, it starts and before you know it's over. Well, uh, a couple of years ago we had musket training. Now we didn't actually fire the musket balls on camp, you know. But uh, we had, uh, that's Garrett, that's Pastor Lear. And he brought his uh, operating musket and we had a lot of fun learning about that. Some of the field trips over the years, uh, Lexington Battle Site, uh, Concord Bridge, State Houses, Boston, and uh, New Hampshire. That's the hike of Mount Monadnock, which is a beautiful hike. It's, at one time, it was the most hiked mountain in the world. Now I think it's just in the United States. And like I say, it is, uh, it is a challenge. Where and is there's that our now? evening, what's that? Where is that mountain? It's in Jaffrey, New Hampshire, which is, um, well, it was just about eight miles from camp. It's near Keene, if you know where Keene, New Hampshire is. I know where Keene is, yeah. yeah. It's a little bit uh, east of Keene. Uh, evening campfire. It's interesting, too. That some, some people aren't used to this, you know, teenagers. Hey, you know, where's my cell phone? I mean, this is, what's this camp sing stuff about? But usually within a couple of days, they get really into it. And by the way, we don't have people walking around twittering and twattering and on their phones. We will take their cell phones. They're encouraged to call mom and dad. Mom and dad may ever be there. Uh, so they, you know, the counselors will hold their phones for them and say, you want to make a call during break, but you're not running around with cell phones. And there's a rich rural, you know, after a, couple, you know, a day or two like this. But, but they settle down and they realize that life can go on without a cell phone. It's possible, yeah. So, there's some shots of our campfire. Um, swimming and boating, well, you see the lake here. So um, what's the name of the lake again? Richmond. Uh, Richmond, Richmond. Richmond, like the town of Richmond, yeah. Richmond Pond. And uh, let's see. Now... Morning, morning inspection with, uh, with a patriot and godly theme. This is a lot of fun. The girls are much more creative than the guys usually, you know. And they tend to be a little cleaner too. That surprised me. Um, but after our class on the Fourth Amendment, here's one. Come back with a warrant. <laughs> oh, I think they're, they're learning something. That's good to see, right? And uh, I mentioned some of the field trips, so I'll just sort of skip, skip over this. But, uh, and this, is, this area is rich in field trip history. I mean, you've got the Norman Rockwell Museum, you've got the Crane Paper Museum where they make the, the Federal Reserve for the paper and for the Federal Reserve. You have um, Herman Melville's home and you have the Quaker, Shaker Villages. I think you can almost throw a rock to the place, right? If you have a good arm, right? Yeah, we could walk. Um, yeah, it's, so you have a lot of these opportunities here. Chester, Who's the poet Chester too? There's field. another poet that uh, just a little bit east of here. Uh, there's the Edith Wharton. Oh, that's another one. Emerson. Not Emerson. Not I Emerson. Oh. Not Wendell Holmes. 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 Not Wendell Holmes. But anyway. Edward St. Vincent Malay? No. That, no. Anyway. Where's Longfellow? Uh, of course, there's uh, Chesterfield. We have, <coughs> we have year round activities. Like this is something that we do, uh, these events. In February of last year, by God's grace and the generosity of many of our supporters, I was able to do it full time. I tell people I get paid weekly, W-E-A-K-L-Y, but it's a blessing. It's a wonderful ministry that I look at it. And um, so our YouTube channel, that's something I'll... Uh, and by the way, we're looking for people, other people who might do videos in the course of the year. And I know Mertz uh, has that secret, our secret password, so we can upload some videos on our channel. Um, we have a Facebook page. If you're on Facebook, please go to that and like it. A lot of our events are, I mean, all of our events are posted on there. So if you say, what do you got? are you guys going to do something in my area? Oh, gee, they're doing a breakfast at Pittsfield. That's not too far away. Um, we do a radio show, Camp Constitution Radio. It hosts, it airs on WBCQ, which is up in Maine. It's a shortwave. But we also put it on Podomatic, which is uh, an online. 
as well as YouTube and a few other places have picked it up. Hmm. Information tables at various venues. Homeschool shows will be at the Mass Hope Homeschool Show. Um, and if you want to give me some brochures of this camp, I'll be happy to you know put them out and let people know about it. Uh, please, if you're in the home, if you're thinking about homeschooling, please attend. It's the last weekend in April, Mass Hope. Just go to their website. Um, we do have a lot of New Yorkers that go to that. And also, we just signed up for the um, CHAP, which is the Christian Homeschoolers of Pennsylvania. This will be our second year there. And last, in March, uh, last month, we were up in the Maine home, Homeschoolers of Maine. And this is sort of our target market, you know, for people who are interested in our summer camp. But we're not just there to get people to camp. We're there to, to share our information on the Constitution. We like to provide. We, what we do is we have a little 10-question quiz, which, of course, everybody in this room will ace, so I won't have to review it with you. But we have a lot of fun with it, you know, because people will say, oh, I'm... And I said, the purpose of us being here is to help you learn about the Constitution. And we give them copies of the Constitution. And, and then we have information on different issues, things like Common Core and Agenda 21. And uh, we have the Sam Blumenfeld Archive, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But it was very gratifying where a lady came to our table uh, up in Maine and she said, this is what I'm looking for, that, you know, the blue alpha phonics. I've completed my homeschool search. This is great, you know. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, parade floats. We plan to be in the July 4th parade here, right? And we also do a parade in Dedham, Massachusetts, Flag Day. And uh, that's a lot of fun. Um, a website, and we have a blog. Uh, so go to our website, look for our blog. I, I do one called The Weekly Sam. I take something from the Sam Blumenfeld archive and sort of highlight it. Uh, and some of the stuff he wrote in the 80s and 90s is more relevant now than it was when he first wrote it. Um, and let me talk a little about, about, about the archives. How many people know the name of Sam Blumenfeld? A few people. Well, Sam was one of the pioneers in the modern homeschool movement. He was a dear friend of many of us in the room, and uh, I had the, I, I got his, uh, his library. He, he willed it to me, uh, most of it anyway, and we actually took possession of it before he passed at his insistence. And he told me to sell most of his books. He said, just sell, you know, raise money for camp. But a lot of his papers, some unpublished before, like one of them was why he became a Christian, like four or five pages. So it's phenomenal stuff. We also have his Alpha Phonics available on PDF. So you can teach people how to read, even adults, using this simple, which we use for our family. Okay. Uh, also, all 128, less <coughs> all 128 lessons available on either audio or video. Uh, and uh, he's got a course of instruction on cursive, cursive first, none of this block first, and then a little bit of both, as well as all of his newsletters, about a month's worth of audio and video and many other great resources. He was an incredible man, and we miss him. He, but I told him, on Thursday before he died, he died on a Monday, I said, we're going to do our best to make sure your legacy will affect generations yet unborn. And, uh, this quarter, we got 25,000 downloads of his Alpha Phonics. Last year, we had 75,000 the whole year. And we get people in foreign countries. They're going to be learning English, better, <laughs> speaking English better than we, uh, and, and writing English better than we are. So please, uh, that's a free online resource. All we need is uh, you go to that and just you go to our website, click on the archives. We just ask for an email. Um, so please, and share that. Don't be stingy with this good information. Camp Constitution Press, these are some of the things that we published. Um, I'll, you know, I'll talk about a few of the things. Um, I think I have a picture. So we have a speakers bureau. Earl Wallace is one of our speakers. Uh, Dr. Gashore is another. He had a gig in Rhode Island recently. When his documentary comes out, we're going to hit the road. We've got people in California that want to bring us out there. We actually have a, a state rep from inner city Detroit, we found out, whose father has a Christian-based uh, clinic, um, drug, you know, drug counseling. And he said he wants to host us when, we, when, we, uh, when, we, when the documentary is out. So we're making inroads in the inner city, which we think is very important. The freedom message, by the way, is for everybody. And it was interesting, when we got into the, we were there doing an agenda, uh, Article 5 outreach. It wasn't about the drug, but I introduced them. And the state rep, who's, of course, a hardline Democrat, he said, there's too much government, too many regulations. And I looked at him, and I just met him, and I said, there's hope for you yet. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's see, uh, we, testify, uh, uh, we testify before legislators on different issues. And we had some real success with the Article 5. We were able to kill it. We weren't the only ones, but I'd like to think we're the catalyst uh, in New Hampshire, where the other side has been spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. The committee voted against this particular resolution 17 to 1. I mean, I think we're making some inroads. Um, Camp Constitution News, we attend 
and report on certain events. Um, they don't go to all of them. You know, we're not running around with a camera and a mic all the time. But certain, there are times when there's these great events and no one else has a camera. You know. <laughs> No, you need us a camera, you, you're a member of the media. Uh, we do the Lexington reenactment, the Battle of Concord and Lexington, and anybody who wants to take that in, I've got some nice viewing passes. You have to get there early, so give me a call. Last year, I taped it, uh, and uh, the Lexington Minutemen's website, they, they linked our, uh, they embedded our video that we use. They liked ours, that one, better than all the others. So, uh, uh, special projects. Um, we do special projects. We're helping out with this documentary. I spent two days with Joaquin Fernandez and Dr. Kishore, Greater Boston. Um, and that's the documentary that's coming out. And we've done special projects for different organizations. The uh, Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Um, we distributed copies of uh, how, the, how the Republican Party became pro-life, written by Phyllis Schlafly, to Republicans in New England. It didn't take me long, though. <laughs> In Rhode Island, it took me about three minutes, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, and this is our weekend camp. This is a smaller venue, and uh, we're going to have Reverend Stevie Kratt as our guest instructor. We're going to invite a few local people, too, to instruct. But it's going to be Friday night to Saturday, uh, Sunday morning. And uh, I asked a fellow who owned a family, a couple that owned this, I said, what are the rates? He said, it's free. I said, I like those rates. It's, yeah. it's his ministry. Um, and we make a donation. And then we had, we had a doc was hosting something in his library in Waldeboro, and there was a pastor from Warren, Maine. And he said to him, uh, let me know a month before camp, and I'll cover the food. So, uh, yeah. Don't, get, don't, get, don't, get, don't tell too many people about that, though, right? Um, there's, there's our YouTube channel, and I'll just say we have a lot of great things on there. I actually uploaded a year ago the uh, a radio interview of the diver that found uh, Mary Jo Kopechny. Mm -hmm. And somehow it's getting like you got about almost 90,000 views. Something to do with the movie coming out, maybe? Yeah, it's incredible. And uh, that's, that's our table, the Mass Home, Hope Homeschool Show. And uh, there's some um, the Sam Blumenfeld archives, 2 million views in 2000. So that doesn't mean 2 million people. It could be one person looking at, you know, 50 or 100 things, but still a lot. Uh, and I already mentioned there, so I won't. Uh, and uh, there's some of our speakers, Tom Deweese. Pastor Wallace, Duke Pesta, um, Stevie Kraft, Catherine White, and that guy in the middle, I don't know who that guy is, <laughs> and a few others. And some of the things that we published, this, Ed Clemens played a big role in this. This book here, Proof of the Illuminati, you think, what? Uh, we were on a field trip in New Hampshire, Ringe. We went into the little uh, Ringe Historical Society, had a copy of another version of that. And I asked, why would they you know, cover, have a book like this? Oh, the pastor of the church wrote this in 1805. I said, wow, pretty fascinating stuff. So we, uh, and he ran his campaign on that and got elected to the wow. state senate. Yeah. And then we have other books. So I've got a few here on the table. Um, you're into finance. We got uh, just that one chapter uh, from, from Farm Board of Financier about that secret meeting at Jekyll Island by the man who was the, one of the men that were there. And I also, uh, you know, we. We think that the concept of climate change and global warming is something that's new, you know, since Al Gore invented it, like he did the internet. He taught Bobby Hall how to skate too, by the way, did you know? um, 1810, Noah Webster wrote an essay refuting global warming. Oh. It was interesting about Noah Webster is that he went to the Bible for weather patents. Do you go to the Bible for weather patents, Earl? Probably not. <laughs> but he went to the Old Testament he looked at the diaries of farmers. You know, farmers didn't say, oh, today I fell in love for the first, no. You know, they were kind of boring, you know, when the crop came in, when the lake froze, when the first flower bloomed. And he said there are warm winters and there are cold winters, but there's no, and they thought it was a good thing, by the way. They didn't think it was the world coming to an end. They thought so because certain species of animals were coming further north, and that's what and Thomas Jefferson was an advocate of uh, uh, climate change, uh, global warming. Uh, you know, there are, um, wild parrots in East Haven, or West Haven, Connecticut. Mm. They got loose, they mate, and they're doing well. They're, they're a nuisance. So I can say that you know East Haven or West Haven has become tropical. Well, it hasn't. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of, we got, we don't go around looking for controversy, although I do say I do have an inner P.T. Barnum, uh, you know. <laughs> well, uh, back in August, well, I actually say back in, it was June, of, June it was a, a inner city pastor was having a prayer meeting inside the mayor's office. He invited me went with Dr. Kishore. The mayor was nowhere to be found. I mean, that's the last thing he wants, to be around when people are praying. And on the way out, there was the rainbow flag on the city hall plaza. So it was June, you know. 
Um, that's when they celebrate the Stonewall Riot. You know, that's, that's, anyway, I won't get into that. So uh, we did raise a flag about five years ago. Uh, we had no trouble uh, doing it. But I said, we want to raise the Christian flag to commemorate Constitution Weekend, you know, about the middle of September. And I, you know, went, I called the lady up who was very good to me, and she said, here, give me some dates, and then we'll get back to you. Well, it took about over a month. We usually get back to you within three days. We got the official no because it's a separation of church and state. And the email, the uh, city seal was embedded in the email. The city of Boston seal has a Bible verse, but it's in Latin, so nobody knows what it says. But I know what it says. It's also on the flag that flies over City Hall, the city flag. So um, I did a, uh, So we got the official no, and the woman on the phone says, uh, this isn't right, you should be able to do this. So I did a news release to local newspapers and some of my email contacts, and a lady suggested I contact uh, Liberty Council, which is one of the groups that fights these kinds of things, Christian-based. And I got a hold of them at late at night on their, on their website, where the next day I got a phone call from uh, Richard Mast, who's one of the attorneys, and they did a news release, and it went all over the country, and made the front page of the Boston Herald, I got a no-fly zone. Yeah. And, uh, and you know what? It was this little cross. That was it. If that was anything else. And there are a lot of flags of various countries that have similar things. But yeah. anyway, it's also legal to fly a flag of a foreign nation on, on, on city or state municipal property in Massachusetts. Wow. But the Attorney General is not going to enforce that one. Anyway, they, uh, there's going to be a lawsuit, um, and they haven't filed it yet. But we're not interested in any monetary issues. We just want to be able to raise that flag. But they can raise the transgender flag and the rainbow flag and the flag of communist China. We're going to raise the flag of, um, of um, Christian flag. So problems, today's youth. 80% of vote. And by the way, we don't endorse candidates. That's not what we're about. Most of our people involved are very involved in politics, but we're not, and we're not going to endorse candidates. Uh, but 80% of the voters under 30 supported Billery. Uh, Billery, yeah. <laughs> Billery, Billery, Hillary, right? That's my 90s uh, lo uh, lingo. Bernie or Hillary? Government schools have been dumbing down students for several generations. And with Common Core, it's a lot more. Uh, than, uh, and morality is in decline. I think we can sort of figure that out. Um, and so the, our, our solution is to get them, to get that 80% down a little bit. I tell people we either, we, we either just don't die so we can keep that edge, or we have to get that 30 and under group. I'll have them understand freedom and liberty. You know, one year I spoke at Keene State College. It was a panel. It was called Dot Rights. You know, they passed a law that says if you get federal money, you have to have this symposium on the Constitution, which is unconstitutional, by the way, but we took advantage of it. I was invited. And mostly young people, 150 or so, and they all had constitutions on their seats. And we, we had a little, like a little two or three minute opening comments. And I said, I said, uh, I know there's constitutions on your seats. This is your freedom. This is an owner's manual for a free people. Some of you will leave these because you don't really care about freedom and liberty, but I'm going to take them and find people who do care about it. Well, every constitution was taken. Yeah. Okay. It, was, it was very gratifying. They just don't know it. They just don't yeah. understand it. You know? um, so there are some of the plans, goals, and vision. Uh, a vision is a plan without money, right? <laughs> now, it would be nice if we had our own facility, you know, year-round facility, yeah. maybe. Um, we want to strengthen our camp program, start other camp constitutions. And we have people, like, oh, we should have a camp here in Idaho in California. Assemblies require it, though. You know, you got to put leather, yeah. shoe leather on that, not just saying we should have one. Of course we should have one. Um, work with those who would want to start similar programs in the areas. We doesn't doesn't have to be under our banner, but we have a great model, mm. you know. And it's really a complicated model. And you think of all the things we do, all the staff people we have. Uh, operate a year-round program. Uh, this camp is... There's a lot of camps are for sale. No, no not, not this one. <laughs> and um, purchase a camp facility. That, that, you know, that, like a question mark, I know I, I've been advised that you spend all your time worrying about the, the maintenance of the building, you know, mm -hmm. and you can't do the mission. So uh, a full-time director, well, that's part, that's become me. But we like to not just stop with one person, but have others. Um, and I, I won't go into this one starting a new camp. This is when I'm out of the region here. Are we making a difference? Since 2009, and I have to up that because now it's 12,000 or so, uh, we distributed over 12,000 copies of the U.S. Constitution, made a direct impact on hundreds of young people and their families. And a lot of times, it's, you, make in, you make an impact on a person, he goes out and impacts, oh, that snowballs. So it's a lot of stuff we really can't measure. 
helped to stop Agenda 21 policies in New Hampshire and Maine. We distributed uh, reprints uh, that uh, that were that a friend, one of our supporters, printed up, and we went to almost every single town selectman in New Hampshire with this important information. Uh, we did the same thing in, a, in an area in Maine. Uh, helped to oppose an Article 5 convention, and if we have one, we will probably lose this Constitution. Okay. Oh, that's the Constitutional Convention. Yes, you're talking? That, oh, yes, okay. and uh, especially in New Hampshire and Maine, um, helped to expose Common Core in the inner cities. Well, we I think the first, the second presentation on the subject in inner city Boston was with Duke Peston. Um, YouTube, uh, YouTube channel. It's got over a million. I got to update that. We got a million, oh, well over a uh, half a million now. And uh, the Sam Blumenfeld archive is being utilized by people all over the world. Over 75,000 copies of Elphonics have been downloaded in 2017. Our presence, at, our presence at homeschool shows and other venues helps to bring an understanding to attendees on a variety of issues, Common Core, Climate Change Hopes, the dangers of an Article 5 convention, the UN, and a better understanding of the U.S. Constitution. And what can you do? Well, there's a lot you can do, but promote the camp program, become a camp sponsor. If you have a business or a nonprofit, for an annual donation of $100, you can put your business there. All the people that participate in the camp, and some uh, counselors or even attendees, if they have a business, we put it up there on our sponsors page. Hmm. Offer your time, talent, and treasure. Uh, volunteer at camp, and uh, Kathy just volunteered to be the nurse a few minutes ago. Host a speaker at, at your, uh, your organization, your Rotary Club, or just, you don't have to have a formal entity, you just say, hey, I got a lo local library, or even in your home. You know, and, uh, and host an event, host a speaker, um, attend Camp Constitution, and help us help support us financially. Um, we have a uh, an account on uh, pay with PayPal, and uh, we have some people who give us annual donations. Um, and a larger, we have a church entity that gives us probably, probably work for that. We wouldn't be able to do what we do, but we have a lot of folks that give us five bucks a month, ten bucks a month. We have a lady, dear sweet lady. She sent me ten dollars every month in a ten dollar bill. You know, she's not a widow, but you know, widows might. You know, I look at that. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah. you know, it's a great program. And like I say, what's five dollars a month? That's not even a cup of uh, coffee anymore. Two cups of coffee maybe. <laughs> so you can go right to our website and you'll see the drop down for that. Or you can just make a you know annual donation or monthly donation other ways. Uh, I mentioned the camp sponsor. See, we have, like this lady here. She hosts a radio show, and we've been frequent guests on her show. I actually co-hosted, hosted. I mean, I hosted a show. She was on vacation. She said, "Can you host a show?" I said, "Absolutely." And she wanted to Skype in. I said, "You're on vacation. I got a cover. You know, I've been doing radio shows since 1990. What's the oh, big wow. deal?" And uh, she thinks she was worried that they'll be listening to me more than her. I'm kidding. No, but she's good. And we hope to do what we hope to do a remote. I like to do a, a remote at camp if that's possible. And so we have other sponsors. Um, uh, conservative Chick Chat. That's a radio show in uh, Nashua. We're regular guests there as well. So, so these people don't pay us anything, but we get on their shows, and we're happy to help them sponsor that. And uh, let's keep the campfires going. <laughs>